I'm in desperate need of a haircut, but due to past experience, I'm a little scared. So I have to face the facts. My hair is getting pretty out of control. It might look peaceful on the surface, but deep within, a beast lurks with a mind of its own. It's like a gremlin. No, not really. It's just hair. I think. But it's getting quite hard to manage. It's pretty tough. In honor of the recent International Women's Day, I'm really gaining some first-hand respect for women with long hair. Because this is hard, and this isn't even that long. This is rough! See, when my hair is short, or at least the shorter length I'd like it to be, it assumes a sort of bristly nature and sticks up in the front, which is my preferred hairstyle. It's taken years and a lot of experimentation to zero in on that style, and I think it works for me. But this doesn't. This has got to go! When I have short hair, I pride myself on never having to use gel or spray or wax of any kind to style my hair. I just push it up after getting out of the shower when it's still a little wet, and it cooperates. I do no molding, no teething, no primping, as they say. I'm not sure if those terms apply to male hair, but I believe in gender equality, so I think I have an equal right to use those words. But the ability of my hair to stand up on its own like that hinges upon the short length of said hair. When it gets too long, exhibit A. It can't support itself and it's crushed under its own weight. And no matter how much I push and pull and fiddle and finagle with the do, it don't do. It doesn't work, is what I mean. That's what I'm trying to say. It just kind of... <sighs> Hopefully that farting noise conveyed all the meaning I wanted it to. And now I have to work just to keep it from sticking up all over the place. Now I have to pat it down like a TSA official at the airport. Ooh, that was a weak joke. I should be reaching for more than that. People deserve more. That was not the joke you deserved, but the one you needed right now. That was a Dark Knight reference, actually. I haven't done one of those before. Where is the trigger? Where is he? Sorry, too far. Too much. Big Batman fan. Hard to hold back. So anyway, my hair, when it's long, just ends up looking like some kind of dead animal laying on my head, lounging. Nobody really knows how to describe it or respond to it. The best thing anyone said to me when my hair looks like this is, Your hair reminds me of, like, a news anchor. Thanks? I mean, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with that. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, could that be a compliment? Hey, I really like your hair. You got that whole Walter Cronkite thing going on. It's awesome. Awesome. You nailed it. Oh, thanks. I respect Walter Cronkite, so I'm gonna take that one to heart. Or maybe I should respond with, thanks a lot. That's one comment I'm sure we'd all like to hear. Back to you. No, that probably wouldn't go over well. Personally, I can't help but feel that my hair has morphed into that of a 1970s musician. I'm thinking the Bee Gees, if you catch my drift. More than a woman. More than a woman to me. On the nights on the Broadway. Singing them love songs. Singing them straight to the heart songs. Believe it or not, I may not have had the lyrics totally 100% right on that last one, but you get the picture. And as much as I love the Bee Gees, oh, I'm a big fan. I don't know if their hairstyles are something I want to emulate at this point in time, or history, really. So I've come to the conclusion that I need a haircut. But the barbershop nearby that I went to last time, yes, it's literally a barbershop with the striped pole outside and the old-fashioned spinning metal padded chairs inside, was not an excellent experience. Don't get me wrong, the barbers were extremely friendly, very talkative. Couple of sweethearts, what can I say? But they were so talkative that they distracted me from how much hair they were cutting off. It went like this. So, uh, tell me about yourself. How do you like going to school here? Well, I like it a lot. It's a great place. The campus is beautiful. The people are nice. And, uh, whoa, that's a lot taken off the sides there, Chief. Yeah, don't worry about it. So, uh, how about this weather we've been having? Oh, yeah, it's incredible. Sunny and hot every day. I've been going swimming. And where did my sideburns go? Hey, it's all good, buddy. Don't worry. So, uh, you been to any of the restaurants around here yet? Definitely. I went to this great little Italian place the other night, actually, where why are my bangs so short? That was the key to my look! So I'm not terribly keen to repeat that experience, but I'm thinking now I'm just gonna go in there with laser-like focus and keep my eyes on the mirror the whole time and monitor the entire haircut. Don't try to fool me with your sorcerer's ways, barber. That was a Star Wars reference, actually. And this barber doesn't have any sorcerer's ways, really. Just friendly conversation. Though very distracting conversation, to be fair. So I'm gonna grab this haircut by the horns and keep it under control. And we'll see how it goes. Could be good, could be bad. Could be mediocre. You never know. Remember, sometimes you have to take risks to be the person you want to be. Sometimes those risks include worrisome haircuts. But some risks are worth taking. I'm really overthinking this, aren't I? I mean, it's literally just a haircut. But I'm still scared, I gotta be honest. Gotta get that off my chest. Well, I'm gonna go for it. 
just pay a visit to the old barbershop. I wish they had a quartet, but that's another conversation. Wish me luck. I'll catch you later. Well, never mind. Mission aborted. The barbershop is changed. There's a new owner. The two old friendly barbers are gone. And now there's this random lady there, and it, she's trying to change the name, but the place still looks the same, so it's like a whole different setup now. The old-fashioned spinny metal chairs are gone. Now there's just the comfy leather padded ones. Not as cool. And the striped pull outside isn't even turning. It's heartbreaking. And she told me I'd have to make an appointment if I wanted a haircut today, and I said, sure. And she said, okay, well, I only have an opening at six o'clock today. Can you wait that long? And I was like, nope. Sorry. So then I went to this other barber shop in another place, and it was closed. What's the dealio? I don't know what the dealio is, to be honest. I mean, it's so sad to me that this old-fashioned barber shop is gone. What does this mean for the future of haircutting? In a world with no old-fashioned home-style barber shops, things are relatively normal, really. Not that bad. But it's still depressing because we've lost some of that good old-fashioned hometown heart. And that's important. In America, my world just came crashing down around me, as far as hair goes. Oh, I'm not gonna be getting a haircut today then, laddie. I guess I'm just gonna have to live with this for another few days. But I guess the excursion wasn't a total loss. I got jamba juice. Jealous! <coughs> I went down the wrong too. Maybe it was a total waste anyway. But I will get this haircut. If I have to build a new barber shop with brick, mortar, and my own two hands, I'll do it to get this haircut. No, I don't think I'll do that. That's going a little far. I don't even have a strong grasp on architecture, so that's not safe. I wouldn't trust the structural integrity of that barber shop. Anyway, have a good day. I hope it goes better than mine so far. I'll catch you later. For real this time, I will.